Hey everybody, welcome to the Daniels on Research. I'm David Daniel. I'm Dan Willingham. And we're gonna go through articles for, with you um, just to see how they might apply to education, or if they might apply to education, and what we wanna be looking for in further research and recommendations for practice. Um, for our first one, we thought it'd be really interesting to talk about something that goes along with the COVID crisis. Um, and one of the things that teachers are really thinking about right now is how to partner with parents who are at home with their kids while we're someplace else. So we found this really great article right here. There it is. Okay. Interge intergenerational effects. Of parents' math anxiety on children's math achievement and anxiety. Thanks, I couldn't read backwards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> we'll do a no, reading I study are. next. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, so we're going to start off with a kind of a summary and just start talking about it and uh, go from there. Yeah, so it's, uh, it is, as David said, it's, it's um, uh, certainly topical because it's thinking about this sort of intuitive idea that there's this intergenerational transmission of attitudes towards mathematics. So if parents are really anxious about math, then there's certainly, it certainly seems plausible that they might communicate that to their children one way or another. And in particular, you would think the more that parents talk with their children about mathematics, um, the more likely that transmission is to happen. So that's a question that they were trying to look so at. In other words, what you're kind of saying is all that advice we've been giving about reading, we think should apply to math. The advice being like read, just as you say, read with your children, then you would say like parent, parents should like get involved with that. Yeah, absolutely. So the way they did the study, I mean, when you think about it, it's a pretty challenging study to do. So they're looking at, David, help me, I've forgotten the age. Is it first and second or second and third? First and second. Yeah, I think it's first and second. It's early elementary. And what they're doing is they're, uh, the researchers are testing kids in math achievement at the beginning of the year and math achievement at the end of the year, and also anxiety at the beginning and at the end of the year. Then they're going to give measures to parents during the middle of the year, and they're also going to give measures to the children's teachers in the Which middle. Which I love that. I love actually including the teacher and, 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 and co-varying that. Just yes, that was that. And so it's, it is a carefully done study and um, hats off to them. Uh, so anyway, to, to cut to the chase, the, the, the sort of banner finding is they do get this interaction. So they're looking at how much kids learn about mathematics over the year. Certainly, you know, you're measuring at the beginning of the year, you're measuring again at the end of the year, you figure there's everybody is is going to grow. So what you're curious about is whether parents math anxiety leads to less growth in mathematic achievement, mathematics achievement. Uh, but then it's not quite just simple as like parents who are anxious are going to have kids who learn less math. There's this interaction where parents who are anxious and are trying to help with homework, it's actually going to backfire and they're going to communicate the math anxiety to their kids. Whereas the parents who have math anxiety, but they're just sort of hands off and they're letting the teacher do everything their kids are going, they're going to, their growth is going to be normal. It's going to be uh, as if the parents don't have math anxiety. Um, so that's what kind of would make sense. Uh, and indeed, that's exactly what they find. That's the, that's the marquee finding. Um, and even though, as you, as you said, I totally agree with you, David, it was really cool that they were uh, testing teachers as well. Uh, as I recall, there was not any teacher effect, was there? No. Yeah, and, and which is a nice thing to think about because a lot of times, and they point this out in the introduction, uh, parents tend to think that math anxiety comes from actions that are taken at school in the classroom with the teacher. Right. So to not have an effect there gets you know makes us think about a more complex, more nuanced view of that. That's yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, so that's the big finding. So what what's your take? I mean, are, are should we researchers now be telling parents, listen, you know, you know whether or not you are anxious about math. If you're anxious about math and you've got at least a first or a second grader and maybe would expand beyond those years, uh, maybe it's time to step back and let the school handle it or are we not convinced of that yet? Well, I'm not convinced of that off of this study, but it does raise a really intriguing interaction that we don't talk about, which is um, um, social emotional development and cognitive development and those sorts of things. You know, when a kid falls down, um, they look at their parents to see, should I cry? What's the reaction I'm going to get? You know, we do that social referencing all throughout our lives. So it makes sense that the emotional tone of that interaction is going to give the child some indication of how I'm supposed to be uh, approaching this. 
Yeah, right. that, yeah. And, and again, that's the, I, I agree with you 100%. It's like, um, based on this study alone, you know, I, uh, again, it's one, of, it's one of these difficult things. But I mean, with the, my, in my Twitter bio, the last little bit of my Twitter bio is uh, one study is just one study, folks. And so you should never take any one study, you know, as complete gospel. Um, and this one in particular, I mean, candidly, that it's statistically significant by the standard um, uh, reference that we look for, but it's a small effect size. And thinking about the replication crisis, this is the kind of effect that kind of tends to go away, where you have a study that is not huge, right? You have 376 kids. It's really challenging to collect this kind of data for several hundred kids. But the thing to keep in mind is, the reason I would say it's somewhat underpowered is you would expect this effect to be really small. And the reason you'd expect it to be really small is because you're looking at growth in mathematics achievement over the course of the year. And you, you know that there's going to be lots of things contributing to that. So many. Right? So many. Yeah. And so, so you're looking for, it's, it's not quite a needle in a haystack, but you're looking for something that might be real, but is going to be kind of small. And there's lots of other things contributing to the outcome that you care about. You know, but I don't think even if it was a really a nice outcome, it's not that actionable for teachers per se, because it's intervention for the parents. Right. Um, so as we're def as we're designing for the parents being more prominent in helping us teach, though, it may make us think about should we be providing the parents more information, more confidence, um, other sorts of things to help us help their children because they're they're actually the intermediary now doing that in the classroom. That's a great point, and I hadn't I hadn't uh, thought about it, that at all when I was reading this article. I've thought about it other times. It's like what. If you're a teacher, what would you like parents to be doing? Yeah, and the, the message may, may be if you're, if you're not, if, if, you, if math makes you anxious as a parent, maybe you want, don't want to help them with the math. You want to help them learn, like, like teach them how to approach math as opposed to, to do math. Right, right. Yeah, that's a nice, and maybe that's a, maybe that's a good closing note for us. Did you have anything else that you wanted to make sure we mention on this article? No, I love the font. It was a great font. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was lovely layout. Um, and so kudos to you, uh, whoever it was who published this. APS, yeah. I think. Uh, great. Okay, so let's call it a wrap, David. Uh, on right. our first, uh, what are we calling ourselves? Daniels on Research? Yeah, that's it. The Daniels on Research. Okay, that's uh, us. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. We'll be back at you next week with another edition.